12 of the best poker players are fighting it out for the Premier League title. What will happen when egos collide, pride is wounded, and one becomes champion of champions? Last time, Phil Helmuth got bashed up. How in the hell does this keep happening to me in this freaking league? It's unbelievable. Wow. I mean, he just cooled me, and you guys want to give me abuse already? And took the bagel. Don't lose your bike. Whilst his arch rival, Durr, took all <laughs> 10 points. That was a sick okay. bluff. That, that was a sick amazing. bluff. Wow. <laughs> He's walking out the door. <laughs> oh, oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> no! That is unbelievable. Coming up, Devilfish has to dig deep this match to keep himself in the Premier League. If he doesn't get points on the board tonight, his dream of becoming champion could become a nightmare. I fucking hate this game. This game's so sick. Are you trying to tell the world that you know more about poker than I do? One more fucking time. All the guys with all the points at the moment are the guys who have been rocking and rolling and getting the money in and you know, all the guys who have been playing steady, we're all right there at the bottom, so, you know, maybe you have to change the taxes, huh? Well, Peter Eastgate's the only player in the top four in action tonight. With a good finish this evening, he can really put some distance between himself and the bottom and start clawing at Tran and Dwan. In the playoff zone, big evening for Healthy and Corin. They'll be looking top three. That'll solidify their run to the top four. And in the relegation zone for Oberstan and Black, they have to start making ground up. A bagel, two points, just not good enough. And for the Devilfish, it's back against the wall. Do or die time for the fish. One player thinks they know the reason behind the fish's fortunes. When Devilfish does badly, he always does blame his terrible luck. And he has had bad luck. But, you know, he'll also blame the dealer. He'll think it's their fault. For me, the key to Devilfish is the clothes. And, you know, he still hasn't grasped this secret, but it seems to me obvious. Every time he turns up in a sharp suit with the red sunglasses on, he wins. Every time he comes in skin-tight denim with an embroidered dragon on the side, he gets unlucky. I think it's all about the style, and I hope he still hasn't figured that out. Players walking in, and the devilfish dressed to the nines. Big implications for the league tonight, Phil. Oh, it's massive. I mean, uh, you know, fish really needs a first or a second. Otherwise, at least the feeling is in the green room. If he doesn't finish first or second, he's out. You can see the chips on the table. Yellow's worth a thousand, blues are two, reds 5,000 each. There's 100,000 in front of every player and 600K in play. I think the different styles, Phil, there's been people like Durr and uh, even Eastgate coming out here really firing out of the box and then others who really believe you have to be tight early. Is it for sure which is the best strategy? Well, that's a very good question, I think. I mean, I, I believe that if, if everybody else is going to play really fast, then for sure you should play really tight. And if everybody else is going to play uh, really tight, then you can get away with playing faster. But I like to kind of just, uh, you know, see what the cards bring for the first few levels and not get myself in trouble. Cool. Any blacks at, raise this one, 9, look 10 at this suited. Hand. Yeah. Two people with an ace, two people with a 10. There's, there's some dangerous flops out there for some people. Well, that makes it easy. Vicky's flop top hair. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Vicky's flop top hair, but Eastgate has the nut flush draw. It's kind of a Scandinavian thing, Phil, to be check raising with draws, but Eastgate's led right out of this. Well, there's four <laughs> players in the pot. I'm thinking he, he, you know, he just wants to bet, put pressure on anybody behind him that might have queens or jacks or something because they have to worry about all of the players in the hand. And like. Phil, Vicky's one of those people who's very aware of her place in the point standings. You know, she's mid-pack. She's like, is she gonna, she's folding because she doesn't want to play a big pot yes. early. Is that is that a weak fold? Yeah, it was an incredibly weak fold. I mean, she's supposed to call the 10,000 um, and see what happens in the turn. Now, if a spade comes and he bets big or an ace comes and he bets big, then she has problems. Now, if a blank comes and he bets big, now she has to reevaluate her hand and decide, are the kings good? But... You know, it just makes no sense to fold that hand right there. And Vicky is really the, the tightest player at the table. She just fold and fold and fold and fold and fold and give herself a chance to, to move to second, third, or fourth. But that doesn't give you a very good chance to win. And uh, it's not really playing poker. Eastgate hijack. Lovely heart suited. And... Uh, Black from the button with the suited ace as well. Andy will look at this as the student and the master. I mean, by his own admission, he gave Eastgate 
advice on the final Six table of the World okay. Series this year. And by Eastgate's admission, the advice helped. Raised to 25,000. I mean, Eastgate found a second bullet. He's got the flush draw now, and Andy's raised. D does this look like a king to you if you're Eastgate? Eastgate, so far, everybody's tried to bluff him and play with him, and I'm not sure what he's thinking, but okay. I mean, he has a flush draw, so he's decided to call. He thinks, he might be thinking Andy has a king. Is Andy going to win this on the river if Eastgate misses? I think so. We're going to see. First of all, Eastgate didn't miss, so... Oh, ho, 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 it's okay. the flush. I sucked off. No, you didn't suck out, Eastgate. You had the best hand the whole way. But I... It's interesting. I mean, if if a non-flush card does come, I think Andy was going to just check it to him. Yeah, and the way Eastgate said I sucked out, it meant he, he was giving Andy credit for the king, wasn't he? Exactly, exactly. So Andy could have followed through on the bluff if the heart hadn't come and it would have worked. But, geez, he's got 161,000 already, Phil. That's a clear value bet. The Dane, Peter Eastgate, is the current world champion and $9 million richer because of it. At 22 years old, when he won the youngest ever main event winner, breaking the record held by Phil Hellman. Yeah, there's like a big, pressure for me to prove that the final table was not a fluke. But on the other hand, I'm not kind of nervous that I will go through a year without results because I know the variance in poker. And uh, yeah, I already won $9 million, so I can take the variance. For this lineup, there's so many good players. It's a very interesting clash of generations. The old generation should be aware of what what is changing in the game because the, the young guys are kind of like the representative of the new kind of way of playing the game. I'm not necessarily saying that the correct way of playing the game, but the game has changed. It's going to be interesting for me to see what he does and if he protects the chips and if he puts himself in some bad positions or... Total. The raise has come from... Has it come from the fish? Or no, it's come from Eastgate. Sorry, Ace-8. Cool. Well, that's not really like Vicky to just call with the jacks. Why has she done it? I don't actually mind the call so much. I mean, I, I kind of like the call, actually. But look at this. Wow, Devilfish is just dead. He has Jack-10 offset against yeah. two jacks. Look at those hands. She's in such great shape here. There's only two aces in the deck that could beat her. 25,000 in this pot right now. And Andy Black has flopped a flush draw, so this is, you know, beautiful. Okay. And Andy Black's just going to be sticking his chips in here, isn't he? He's only yeah. got 58,000. Yeah, I mean, he's short. He lost a lot of chips in the last hand, and I and I think that there's going to be a big coin flip here. Is Vicky somewhere between betting and check-raising all-in type of thing? or? I mean, I, you know, I think she might bet 10,000. Oh, no, she's much more aggressive. 25,000. 25,000 insta all-in. Now, Pass. Vicky is, you know, she's going to find it only costs her, what, 30,000 more or whatever. And uh, she's gonna, she's, you know, she's gonna, I'm sure she's gonna call, so she's in great shape right away. I, it'd be impossible for her to put Andy on a hand that, that beats her right now. He wouldn't have played a set like this, would he? I mean, wouldn't he just... Well, he might have, it doesn't even, she doesn't even have to think. I mean, basically, it's not gonna, you know, she has a big over pair, and, uh, you know, and there's a lot of hands she can beat. Cool. So, she's gonna call. Now, Andy Black, uh, he has been so tight throughout this Premier League. He's come out here. It's the seventh hand, Phil. He's all in with a flush draw. Two shots. There's a seven. Now he can't hit the jack of diamonds, so now he's much worse off. He needs an ace or a diamond that's not a jack. Oh, it was red, Hello. Phil. Yeah. Wow. And Phil, the quick. defending champion, Phil, <laughs> the, this bubble is burst. He's got the bagel. That's big news for you. Um, Andy's going to only have 10 points. He's going to be in the relegation zone right now. Yeah, I mean, I think I think he busted himself a little bit there. And looking at the leaderboard now, Vicky's in first. She kind of slow played her jacks, and it paid off. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of why I like the call, you know, is to let's see what comes, and then let's play a pot. I mean, and I know 